So the technology for measuring viewability for video is actually, it's here. It's not as easy as display because there's more stops. You've got the player involved in it, um, which is a stop that's not part of the normal display. So there is a little bit more complexity to it. But the technology is here. We have that technology. We've actually been running some things with clients um, that we've been doing for them custom. I think the reticence to see that come out in a big way and we work with Video Hub, as you mentioned, Tremor, they're MRC accredited, so we work with them because that's really important to us, is that there is no video viewability standard that everyone has sort of rallied around. And, and I know there's no d display standard either that's 100% codified, but there's a lot more progress in that area. So you can measure video a lot of different ways, but if you are some marketers, they say, I only wanna pay if it's 100% played all the way through to the end. And other publishers say, you know, it's there, it's in a great environment, I should get credit. If the video's boring, your commercial's boring, you know, that's not my fault, and I don't, I don't want to get penalized. There's a pretty big gap between buyer and seller in terms of the definition right now, which is why it hasn't moved as far ahead, I think, as you've seen in display. But the technology's there, and we do these as one-offs for clients who have a specific goal that they're trying to reach. Um, but you're not going to see universal trading in the way that I think you're seeing with display happening until there's more people on something agreed upon standard. And it's all about duration right now. Everyone agrees it should show up. They just don't know for how long. Anyone else want to? Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with what Anne's saying. Um, we have technology in place. We're testing it with certain video uh, advertisers. Um, the technology exists. The complexities are different, but they're solvable. Um, there is a difference of opinion on the standard. You know, where, we, where we really net out is that ultimately we continue to provide data. It's up to advertisers to use that data, evaluate the data, and determine what's working best for them, the same as we do with publishers. Um, we support standards. We think standards will emerge, and we're definitely on board with uh, standards for video. But in my mind, the industry sometimes moves quicker than the standards. And I think that giving the advertisers the options to look at data and mull over data and giving publishers those same options potentially accelerates those standards to come to fruition. Because you know, to Anne's point, right now there are sort of polar opposites. But when we actually see what's out there by looking at the data, maybe they come closer together pretty quickly. By the way, that's, that's something we definitely see. So we're a, both a buyer and a seller of media. And one of the reasons we like to do this is because we find if we're first, there's an open ocean there that we can go and tap that other people aren't tapping. I mean, I'll, I'll say, say to the, the, you know, the, the Xaxis team is that there is a fantastic opportunity to take advantage of buying highly viewable media in RTB right now before most of the publishers in the RTB space figure out that they can actually increase their CPMs. Right. There's a massive arbitrage opportunity sure. here. Yeah. Our model is predicated upon that, though. We, we rarely buy in the open exchange. You know, Xaxis, our model is leveraging the power of Group M and the 90 billion we spend, where the majority of it is deal ID, one-on-one -on -one relationships for that exact reason. Because yeah. I'm not in a position not to be, I don't have to be able to participate in a lot of cases in the open market if I can give the publisher the benefit and sit above it. Um, yeah. With video, there's more of a challenge. You know, I think with video, if you look at what that is, you know, trying to find, you know, is it autoplay? Is it the sound on? Yeah. Because where there's money, there's fraud. And when people look at the CPMs, you know, if I can do it there for $6 or $7, that'd be a heck of a lot more advantageous than I am for doing it for 25 cents. So until we do bring the standards, which I'm a full proponent of, um, it's going to be, you have to monitor it. You have, it's not just something I think we do part-time. It's something we do all the time. Fraud uh, is, a great, is a great thing to bring up when you're talking about video because that is one way before you even get to viewability. But if you can eliminate those sites that, I won't call them fraud, but they're generating non-human traffic, and because it's video, I call they that think fraud. Do <laughs> <laughs> have any lawyers in the room? Um, and did not call it fraud, <laughs> but Walter and Brian yeah. did. Uh, yeah, it's fraud. <laughs> Non-human traffic. Um, you can see there are video sites, and we see this unfortunately too often, where they realize, hey, there's high CPMs in health video. Let me make a health video site. No one ever goes there. But let's just get a lot of video inventory into an exchange so that it can get bought and I can make a lot of money. And that's a great way to eliminate ads that aren't viewable as well. It's also starting to eliminate those that 
just from the brand safety perspective are being auto-generated and not generated by humans. So you can cut out a good chunk even before you get into whether then it was seen for a certain five second duration or a 30 second duration.